Um, we'll start with a statement from Coach about this week's games against Florida and Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Whenever you're ready. Uh, we have two huge games on the docket uh, with Florida uh, this Thursday and then Tennessee on Sunday. Uh, right now, the SEC is kind of in three tiers, uh, teams with one loss, teams with two losses, uh, us and Vandy. And then we have a group with three losses and below. So, But it's like neck and neck. Uh, the SEC is going to be a long game just for us. Last year, um, we didn't know how we would finish until the buzzer sounded, literally. So I think this year will be um, kind of similar and just as competitive. Uh, I want to just invite people to come out for the games on Thursday and Sunday. They're huge, huge games for us as far as standing is, standings are concerned. And, uh, you know, we would love to have a home court advantage. Uh, starting with uh, Florida that has a higher net than us, and then Tennessee is right behind us in the net. So uh, two both important games. Snoda is four three-pointers away from being top five all time here. What, what, what do you remember about recruiting her, mm -hmm. and, and where have you seen her grow the most? Uh, I just remember it being the last day we could be out for recruiting. The last day I had gotten an email the day before, I watched the clips and I canceled whatever I was doing and I, I drove down to see her. And uh, I remember walking to a gym and seeing Snooter play, uh, just shoot around for about five minutes. And right then and there, I said, I'm getting ready off for this kid. Uh, just of the mere fact that she was from Mississippi, six foot one at the time, uh, could shoot the three. I just thought her future would be bright, and so, uh, and and it actually ended up being a great decision for us. You know, and when you talk about old men. Miss Women's Basketball, obviously you have to talk about Snitha Collins. And I did not know that she was four threes away, and hopefully she can get it this game. But um, I'm confident that the next two games she'll try to squeeze that in. <laughs> Looking back at the film from Sunday and just mm -hmm. having Todd out there at the point guard, and she said y'all worked on it all week, mm -hmm. but just what did you see when you were able to kind of evaluate the post game? Well, what I love about my team is now um, we can play Kennedy Todd at the point. We can play Madison Scott at the point. Um, Ayana has shown that she wants to handle it a bit. And then I have two freshman point guards. So we have a variety of people that could step in. And that's what I was saying. Like, it's just going to take us some time to really get our rhythm going. Um, and I felt like uh, this past game was just a great game for Toddy to get her hands on the ball, to feel it. She has been practicing extremely well, so I'm not surprised that she performed the way she did. Usually it correlates. And so, you know, we're still – you see us still messing with that lineup a little bit just, just because I'm trying to – figure things out, and honestly, it may change every game uh, according to who we play. So, uh, But we have that luxury to do that, and so um, really excited about the progress of our team. And like I said, I still don't think we play our best basketball until mid-February. Do you think it's challenging <clears throat> for players to have to learn how to play with so many different point guard scenarios mm -hmm. that you've tried this, this, this season? Not really, because as a coach, I try not to overcomplicate things. You know, it's not like we run this sophisticated motion, read and react offense. It's pretty much, you know, we eat how we eat, transition, um, you know, offensive rebounds and free throws. And so if you've watched us play, you see that. And, and it gives a freedom for anybody to be able to um, bring the ball up the floor that, that's capable. And so we we want to always try to play advantage basketball. So, you know, if we're a man and Maddie's at the point, then we're going to try to find advantages in that way. If if if, if Snuda has to play the four, we're going to try to find advantages that way. If Toddy is at the point, we find advantages that way. So it's not really – it's not really difficult because our system is our system and, and how we score is how we score, just like how we defend is how we defend. I think that's what makes it easy. What the, the challenge comes with just the newness of everything. You know, um, I think that we, again, started to get really comfortable with KK being our point guard, you know, um, 
And, and, and it's easy to feel that way because of the type of player that she is. And so now um, our team has really learned how to, you know, fly without and adjust. And I think they're starting to figure it out. Um, sometimes when we get in the crunch, you can tell, like, that's something where we're still, like, trying to – who's going to be that voice, you know? Whereas it, it would be natural if it were KK on the court, still trying to find that voice – uh, when when the game gets tight. But Georgia made it tight, and, and Toddy stepped right into it. So maybe it's her, you know. But I don't know that I want to put pressure on anybody. I, I've opened it up for any of them to step up and be the voice we need whenever we need it. You know, players are different, teams are different, but just through your career, have you had a season like this that you can fall back on in terms of so much kind of <clears throat> fluctuation midseason? Uh, not really. Uh, I, I mean, uh, if you've been coaching long enough, you've had a traumatic loss. I remember when we won the championship, actually, uh, my post player uh, tore ACL like six games before we won the championship. Uh, but not at uh, – I've, I've had a starting point guard to start the season, and then that didn't happen. And it's always just been rocky for a little while, you know, and then we figure it out. Because at the end of the day, you have to get basketball players. And, um, and and then you have to hang your hat on what you know to be. And that's us guarding. That's why I've been really unsettled about our defensive effort. Now, um, Georgia was a really good game for us. Alabama was a really good game for us. Auburn was a really good game for us. And they were all resulted in wins. So when we guard at a high level, I feel confident about – everything else that will happen because our defense is the engine to our offense. So, you know, again, Friday, uh, Thursday and Sunday, we got we to gotta guard. We got to guard, and the offense will take care of itself. So you have <clears throat> Florida first, but Tennessee over the weekend, that is one of the three teams that you guys haven't beaten while you've yeah. been here. Um, what would a win over a program like that mean in terms of checking things off and being that next step for this program? Well, you know, we, we won back-to-back -back in Athens, and that was history. You know, any time we have an opportunity to do something special for the program, we want to do it. Uh, uh, but we're chasing even bigger than that. You know, we're chasing – right now we only have two losses. Sometimes I, I crack up because people are, like, offering me condolences on social media. I'm like, we, we lost two games. <laughs> We lost two games. Last year we lost five games um, in conference. But that also goes to show where our program is. You know, it feels like the end of the world, maybe because we lost to Mississippi State and then we lost to LSU, but we have so much more basketball to go. So while uh, I look at Florida and Tennessee as a team that's in the way of us trying to accomplish something way bigger uh, than – uh, what may be right in front of us. Uh, but in order for us to do it, we have to handle what's in front of us, and that so happens to be Florida and Tennessee. So um, a 2-0 and weekend week for me would be great. <laughs> Any other questions? Great. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.